Well, first I will tell them or remind them if they know a little bit that all the matter that we are around is composed of atoms, right? And uh, the atoms are kind of mini uh, solar system, not quite, but nevertheless, it's an image. And in the middle there is a nucleus, which is very high. And for a long time this was supposed, the whole atom, to be uh, not uh, that it was not possible to, to cut it, uh, to separate, but now we know that it is. And inside the atom, there are particles, which are called quarks, and there are other particles, and all the kinds, which are the constituents fundamental of matter, which are what we call elementary particles. And there are also other elementary particles, which are constituents of things which are transmitted from one object to another, like photons, which are constituents of light, and there are other ones. And uh, some of these particles have no mass, and some have mass. Photons have no mass, and the characteristic of mass is normally when you push it, it's very difficult, if it's a high mass, it's very difficult to push it, right? But uh, the more a more uh, detailed meaning of what it means is that those particles which have no mass travel, whatever you do, with the same velocity, which is the velocity of light, right? And particles which have mass never reach the velocity of light. So there's a big distinction between the two. Now, the problem was that one did not succeed to make a theory which could predict what one could do with this elementary particle. In, partic in particular, we know that we can do of them everything that is around us, whether it's that glass, whether it's the door, whether it's this television apparatus, whatever, right? We can do all of that, but the recipe for doing that was not really very well known. And one particular difficulty is that one could imagine constructing a recipe which would work if all the particles which have no mass. And if all particles which have no mass, then one could indeed form a formula which would predict everything, but that would result in predicting nothing, because after all, that is not the world where we live in. And uh, so we were obliged to invent how particles which have no mass can acquire mass, some of them at least, and some not mass, right? And for this, we imagined at that moment some particle bosons, scalar boson, whatever the name is it on it, and uh, that condense to give kind of a sea but the sea that exists all over the universe, so that every particle has to go through it, including ourselves. And so the elementary particle that goes through them can acquire a mass if they are sensitive to this. That is more complicated to understand, but the theory predicts which are the particles which will get a mass and those which will not get a mass. And uh, that essentially permitted to construct the recipe for uh, doing the thing. And the important thing, of course, is that from this condensation, it is possible to extract one particle and test if the theory is correct. And that is what has been done at CERN. Now, I don't know if the 13 or 14 years old will get something, but I hope they will at least get a little bit interested in it.